Welcome to the Real Life Wellness Podcast, the show where we explore how to create your own wellness. We dive into everything that happens on the journey to a happier, healthier, and more balanced life. I'm your host, Faith Lauterbach. As a registered nurse and a holistic wellness coach, I have a passion for empowering people to create a vision for their life, prioritize themselves, and then live the life they want. So get ready to discover new ways to nourish your body, mind, and spirit. Let's embark on this journey together and make wellness simple. Well, hello, and welcome back to the Real Life Wellness Podcast. I'm so excited you're here today. We're going to be diving into a topic that can be sometimes controversial between traditional health perspectives and the holistic health perspectives. And I can't wait to hear what you think about it. So today is going to be what is adrenal fatigue and how to know if I have it. All right. I want you to kind of go back into your experiences with the medical field. And have you ever experienced this? You finally made an appointment to be seen by your doctor because you have one or more of these issues going on and you're ready to feel better. Maybe tired, overwhelmed, not sleeping, cravings for sugar or salt, getting sick often, and or feeling like you cannot handle the stress in your life. And then you go to that appointment finally. Maybe you had to wait a while to be seen. You get there. And then you're told that everything is fine. All of your labs are great. You know, maybe I'm going to write this prescription for you to try out. And then within 15, 20 minutes, they're out the door and you are left there thinking, well, that was a waste of time. And maybe I'm just losing my mind. Well, let me tell you, you are not alone. I have been there personally. Many of my clients have been there, and I am here to tell you that you are not losing your mind. One of the possibilities you may be experiencing is something called adrenal fatigue. This term is something that many people in the traditional health field discredit. But I want to share you what it is and why I believe that it is a real thing, and then I'm going to let you decide what you think for yourself. First, Let's get into understanding what adrenal glands are. What is adrenal health? Our adrenal glands are located atop of our kidneys. They play a crucial role in managing stress and maintaining overall well-being. They're small, triangular-shaped glands, and they produce hormones like cortisol, which regulates our body's response to stress, and adrenaline, which prepares us for that famous fight or flight response. That fight or flight response is something that we naturally have and it's designed to help us survive life-threatening situations. You know, like being chased by a wild animal, getting out of an emergency situation, maybe, you know, getting into a car accident and trying to get help or someone breaking into your house and you having to, you know, fend for your life or escape. That is what the fight or flight response is there for. When our adrenal glands are activated and that cortisol and adrenaline are produced, here is what's happening in our body. Perception of pain is reduced to allow you to fight or flee. The liver releases sugar into the bloodstream to give you energy to fight or run. Your pupils become dilated to help you see better. Blood vessels narrow and blood flow is redirected to like the heart and lungs. Heart rates speed up, and our air passages widen to provide muscles with the oxygen to fight or run away from this danger that it's experiencing. Now, how cool and amazing that our bodies do this. It's just a response that we just happens. It happens when we're in this state of emergency. But again, It's meant for cases of emergency only. And the problem is that the majority of us, this is happening to daily, even multiple times a day. And it's happening in things like getting an email or bombarding with social media 
you know, images or alerts. When we have a stressful situation at work, we may be then triggered to feel like we're being attacked. And this response happens. Our adrenal glands do what they're supposed to do when we're under attack, except we're not under that kind of attack. It only feels like that in our body. So the concept of adrenal fatigue is that when a system that is supposed to be activated only rarely is being activated daily, it's only logical that this would cause problems to the system to be overloaded and then fatigued. The great news is that you don't need a prescription or a procedure to help support your adrenal health in most cases. The bad news, or one that most people don't want to hear, is that there's no quick fix. Our bodies are amazing, and when we learn what they really need, they can heal. So the goal when we're talking about how to support your adrenal glands holistically is really about calming that nervous system so that when we get an email that we don't like or we're told something negative or we see something that's disturbing in the news or on social media, we don't feel like we're under attack, like we are fighting for our lives. We can deal with things, manage, go through our days and life in a more present and relaxed state. So how do we do this? The first thing I'm going to talk about is nutrition. Food is medicine. What you are eating is either helping heal you, helping support you, or it's hurting you. A balanced diet that's rich in whole foods, especially fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, and healthy fats, provides essential nutrients that support all areas of our body, including our adrenal function. Also, avoiding excessive caffeine, sugar, processed food helps maintain stable energy levels. The second thing is stress management. Our nervous systems have to have rest. When we are walking around and our nervous system is activated all of the time, it never gets a chance to rest. This leads to this misfiring of our adrenal glands. When this happens, we have that fight or flight response ongoing and it doesn't rest. So stress management is key to this. So incorporating stress-reducing techniques like meditation, mindfulness practices, yoga, deep breathing exercises are the things that can help calm the nervous system and then reduce that burden on the adrenal glands from overworking and overproducing cortisol and adrenaline. The third thing is quality sleep. Sleep is essential for our bodies to function. It is. There's no getting around it. People may, quote unquote, function on very little sleep, but at what cost? Every system is impacted during sleep. And when we're not getting the sleep that we need, we are impacting every system in our body. So prioritizing quality sleep by establishing a consistent sleep schedule creating a relaxing bedtime routine, and optimizing your sleep environment. Adequate rest is going to allow those adrenal glands to function optimally. The fourth thing I'm going to talk about is lifestyle adjustments. So making lifestyle changes like setting boundaries. This can look like setting up structures at work that you can say no to, that you can take your lunch break, that you can take your vacation time. This may look like social media, limiting how much you're on it, limiting the involvement there, giving yourself rest from things like social media, overly checking email, those sorts of things. Practicing time management and then fostering healthy relationships. These things can really reduce chronic stressors and support that overall adrenal wellness. Number five is moving your body. Our bodies are made to move, but what I will say is intensive exercise can be hard on an overly stressed adrenal gland. So maintaining a balance here 
is really important. So moving your body in ways that heal and feel good in your body, like gentle yoga, walking, stretching, tai chi, you know, things like that, some gentle even body weight movements. But just being mindful about the intensity when you are already overly fatigued. So now that you have these five ways that I suggested to support your adrenal glands holistically, you may be feeling like, well, I can't do all of those. And that is totally fair. And what I always say to people, to clients, to to anybody I'm talking with, when you think about all the things that your body needs, it can feel overwhelming. And so start small here. Pick one of those five areas and then think of the smallest way to make a step towards it. So let's say nutrition. Focus on the tiniest step. So maybe it is adding one serving of vegetable to your day and that's it. Stick with that for a week. Evaluate on Sunday or whatever, whenever the week's up, evaluate and see how that felt to add that extra vegetable in. And then maybe it's like, okay, now I'm going to add in another vegetable, or now I'm going to decrease processed foods. Taking it one micro step at a time is a great way to build foundational health and wellness and not be overwhelmed. Thinking about stress management. Maybe a tiny thing that you can do is getting up 10 minutes early, going by yourself, taking a few deep breaths, writing in your journal three things that you're grateful for. And maybe that's all you do. But adding that in, that one thing that's 10 minutes in your day, can make a huge difference. That third thing, quality of sleep. How can we break that down into a micro habit? Start by going to bed 15 minutes earlier. And you think, like, can that make a difference? And yes, it can. 15 minutes earlier can make a difference. So start there. And again, continue to evaluate it each week and think, like, maybe that felt so good and I'm now going to go to bed 15 minutes earlier than that. Or maybe you just stay at that 15 minutes. It's about listening to your body, being in tune to what's working and what's not. And then in those lifestyle adjustments, Maybe there's a lot of areas that are a little out of control that you feel like boundaries, what are those and how? Like, I don't even know where to start. You know, maybe thinking about, I'm going to start taking my lunch break. Maybe it's something that's that simple. And then that fifth thing, moving your body. Again, take it the smallest step possible towards meeting a goal of moving your body. Maybe that's just a walk around the block every day. Start with that. See how your body responds to that and how you feel. Again, doing that evaluation every week and adding more if you want to, staying there if you want to. But taking those one step at a time, there's five different areas. Maybe looking at one area to start with, just one. Evaluate and add as you're ready, add as it feels good. I hope that that makes sense to you and feels practical. And I would say, too, just having an open conversation with your medical provider. If you are not being heard, if you do not feel heard by your medical provider, then research other places to go. There are people that will listen to you. I mean, it is our doctor's and our medical provider's job to take care of us. We need to communicate what we need. And if it's not a space that can give you what you need, then look elsewhere because there are options and there are other ways to get the care you need if what you're doing now is not serving you. Now, I'd love to know what you think about this. Please reply back and let me know. You can contact me in my email, which I'll have that linked in the show notes. Or you can message me on social media. 
Thank you so much for joining me today. And until next time, be well. Thank you so much for tuning in today to the Real Life Wellness Podcast. To stay updated on my latest episodes and wellness insights, be sure to subscribe to the podcast and follow me on social media. If you have any questions or topics you'd like me to explore, feel free to reach out. I love hearing from you. If you could, please review or rate this podcast on Apple or Spotify to help more people learn how to make wellness simple.